Next up we have Kim Isherwood from Wales. Where's all the ladies from Wales? Jill has a uh, lot. I'll just let Kim explain what she's been doing in her group. Hello everyone, how are you doing? So my name's Kim and I'm chair of an organisation called Public Child Protection Wales. We do exactly what it says on the tin. We are the public protecting the children in Wales. We began with a campaign against RSE, like you guys, Relationship and Sexuality Education. But we soon discovered it's not RSE, it's CSE, Comprehensive Sexuality Education. Now everything I'm going to say here today is not up for debate, it's fact, because we have proven this as fact in the High Court in Cardiff. So you better listen up and you better look into everything I say. In March 2017, all four countries of the UK adopted a global sex education, comprehensive sexuality education. We've taken this evidence into court and we have proven it as fact. So what is comprehensive sexuality education? Is it about relationships, biology, and safeguarding? Absolutely not. This is a system built off the back of three theories. The first theory, sexual from birth. The work of Dr. Alfred Kinsey, he believes that we are all sexual from birth. If you look at his research, the sexual behavior of the human male, chapter 5, which is referenced by Dr. Ellie Barnes, I'll have you know, from Ireland. Chapter 5 discusses the sexual abuse and rape of children from two months old. That is their science. That is what they publish as fact. This is all documentation. You can all access it. The second theory gender ideology. This is the work of Dr. John Money. Dr. John Money began his work a long time ago and they come across two twin boys. One of them was called David Reimer. David had a bit of a botched operation on his genitalia when he was very small. The mother and father did, know, did not know what to do. They ended up in John Money's office. What did John Money do? He said, it's fine. This is cool. Gender is a social construct. We can raise him as a girl. So not only did they raise this little boy as a girl, they forced this little boy to perform sex acts on his brother, playing the role of the female. Well, David found out in later years, before he was a teenager, that he wasn't actually a girl. He was a boy. The truth came out. However, by this time, it was too late because John Money's research was published as an absolute success. And this is where we get all the agendas from today. Now the third theory, queer theory. Everyone thinks it's cool and hip to be queer, don't they? But you ask those people, what is your favorite part of queer theory? Who is your favorite queer theorist? And show us one queer theorist that does not support having sex with children. That's what we are dealing with here. The work of Michael Foucault, Judith Butler, and for us in Wales, Professor Emma Reynolds. So how do these theories play out in the classroom? We've seen 242 schools in England teaching four-year-olds about masturbation. But it's to safeguard. We see videos from the BBC promoting over 100 genders. Over 100 genders. But when they have a sex change, it's only a choice of two. So how do we get from two to a hundred to two? This is all nonsense. And then the queer theory, anything goes. Look at their work. They do not believe in childhood. Their words, in a sense, is a myth. 
how does this look in the classroom? Well, according to Professor Emma Reynolds, it's simple. You can draw a silhouette of a body and then discuss where in that body it would feel good to be touched. In her words, nothing is out of bounds. So in Wales, we took part in a consultation where 87% of us rejected this. They went ahead anyway. We did a petition. They phoned us up on the Thursday night and they said, you have got till Monday to get 5,000 signatures or it goes up to 10,000. We did it. We achieved the 5,000 signatures for our debate. We submitted 17 pieces of evidence to our petition committee and they said, we don't know what's misinformation and what's not misinformation. The evidence was there. So we secured a judicial review. We took our government to court. We, we're not stupid people. We know you cannot address this agenda in one go. So we went in for one thing and one thing only, to protect our parental rights. We went into that court and we thought if we can make it manageable, we can then defend our children. We can protect our children. Everything we said, every piece of evidence in our statements, the government could not refute. We have proven everything we said was fact. However, we lost the case. How did we lose the case? Listen up and you listen good. The Welsh government lawyers went into the High Court in Cardiff using case law from all across Europe to argue parents' rights aren't the thing. They do not exist. If they did exist, they would be minute anyway. So that we have no parental rights, but we do have parental responsibility. There's another issue with this education. It's a rights-based approach. Children's rights, bodily rights, sexual and reproductive rights. Our children in Wales have sexual and reproductive rights from age 36 months. Age 3 to 16 with no parental opt-out and we're using the whole school approach. Well, this means it's no longer a standalone subject. It's embedded in every single subject across that curriculum. Let me just remind you, all four governments of the UK adopted the same system with a view for legislative changes. We are all in the same storm. We are just in different boats. So we have successfully united Wales. We've united every single religion, every single race, and every single sexuality based on three principles alone. Principle one, everyone under 18 is a minor. It's not open for discussion. Principle two, only one split in society, adulthood and childhood. And principle three, you're either part of the human race or you're part of the human disgrace. And that's how we proceed. That's how we move forward. This is the end of the road for us. We have no parental rights. Our children have sexual and reproductive rights. Four-year-olds are being taught about masturbation. Children are being taken for abortions in England and sent home like nothing has happened. We had two expert witnesses on our case. Professor David Peaton from Nottingham University and we had Dr. Miriam Grossman, a child psychiatrist from America. Their evidence was ignored. We had a, um, an intervention on our case where a quarter of the mosques in Wales joined our case. It meant nothing. So what do we do now? We take our parental responsibility and we exercise that to our advantage. Me, you, 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 we are all responsible. We are all responsible for our children. And we do not need a piece of paper to we have parental rights to do that. It's our duty to protect our children. If we do not stand up now and fight for our children, Shame on us. We are about to experience the death of innocence. 
You tell me what this world will look like without innocence. That is not a world I want to live in. That is not the world I leave behind. Because I am not the future. You are not the future. Our children are the future. Regardless where you come from, what you support, what you promote, you still have a duty to protect those children. They are innocent. We do have the human disgrace are right in our policies. The human disgrace are right in our legislation. A minority within a minority. What are we going to do about it? We are going to scrap these borders. We're going to leave our issues at the door. And we are going to unite this kingdom for our children. Every single one of us. And anyone who dare not stand up for our children, hang your heads in shame. It's as simple as that. Our children did not ask for this. Our children do not deserve this. We are all victims of the sexual revolution. And it's about time we sorted it out. I don't stand here as I'm proud. I am a child of the streets. I was homeless on and off from 14 to 21. I spent time at Youth Offenders Institute. I lived with hundreds of girls that have been destroyed by this system. Institutional abuse. Systematic abuse. And here we are 20 odd years later and this world is a cesspit. Why is it a cesspit? Because we have stood back and we've been too tolerant on everything. A line needs to be drawn and it needs to be drawn now. There's no grey areas when it comes to safeguarding children. If something can be twisted, it needs to be scrapped. Our children don't need to know about any relationship. I don't want my children knowing about my relationships no matter who it's with. They will develop their own relationships in their own time. Having sex does not define a relationship. Sex positive does not make you healthy, healthy and happy. It destroys you. We release chemicals every time we have sex. And that is responsible for the breakdown of relationships. That's responsible for single, single parents in this country. That is not an education. Our children need to know two things, and two things only. Facts of biology. And the second thing is how to keep themselves safe. And right now, we need to teach our children to keep themselves safe from the establishment. When they tell you, your children need to know intimate details about their genitalia to disclose abuse, you ask them for the research. It does not exist. I am challenging the NSPCC three years on for this research. It does not exist. I am now a qualified criminologist and I specialize in child sex abuse, institutional abuse. And I can tell you that when a child can confidently discuss issues around their genitalia, that is seen as consent. Privates are private. That's all your children need to know. You teach your children nobody looks, touches or talks about their genitalia, including teachers. You teach your children about groomers and you teach them that they have to groom the adults before the children. So when a man comes into their school in a sparkly dress, makeup and heels, that is a groomer. Simple as that. We do not groom the alarms anymore. We teach our children to raise the alarm. Privates are private. It's bad enough we've got to teach three-year-olds to protect themselves anyway. But that is essential. That is vital. Our children now have sexual and reproductive rights. They've been promoted in a classroom in Scotland. A way of not getting pregnant, they were promoting anal sex. No risks, all promotion. Sex positive, no consequence of. Consent. They're teaching children to consent so they can say no. That's a lie. Consent is negotiation. No is no. You teach your child, no. You empower your child against this system. And more importantly, we all come together and we stand up. We are 
the United Kingdom, and it is our duty to unite this kingdom and protect our children. They are the future, not us. We've waited a long time to break through to Northern Ireland. We've, honestly, we've tried so hard. So the moment we got the invite, less than 24 hours later, we were booked because we mean business. This is not open for debate. If they are saying it's misinformation, they've got to prove that. And they can't because we've already proven the law. What happened to us when we went into court? We had a total of £62,000 court costs from our government. Our government sent us emails threatening to remove our assets for that money. This isn't a joke. This is the reality of what is going on. Is that the Welsh government? Absolutely not. Is it the UK government? Absolutely not. Is it the Irish government? No way. This is orders from above. Unelected officials. They come from a place that we do not recognise. The lifestyles are something we do not promote and we certainly do not support. So guys, nobody at the top has ever changed anything at the top. Never. We have proven the government are corrupt. We have proven the judicial system is corrupt. Now it's time to act. As people at the bottom, we have 100% success rate when we start. And I am not about to change things now. We will overcome this. We will build a system of safe children. And we will create the safest place in the world for raising and educating our children. And we will not stop until we achieve that. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Kim. So along with Kim, we have Adele here today. And Adele is a classroom teacher. And she's gonna explain exactly what has been happening on the ground in Wales. Hello, and thank you. Um, first of all, I just wanna say I'm very honored to be speaking here today. Um, although Wales and Ireland, or Northern Ireland, we're connected by a government, uh, myself, my family, and my home for half my life was in Southern Ireland. You may not be connected by your government, but you are connected by land. And this is a time of unity. This is a time of putting all your politics, all your religions, all your personal beliefs, because every single one of us here have got the same morals or we would not be stood here. And it is our morals that you need to unite us. So I am a teaching assistant. Um, my experience in general is I have been working with uh, people with learning disabilities, profound learning disabilities, for 22 years. For the last five years or so, I've now been based in schools. I work in mainstream schools as a one-to-one, -one, and then I work in special educational needs schools within various classrooms. And I would like to share some of what I have seen. So many of the schools that I now work in, every school has got a well-being area. You go into any well-being area of a school and that well-being area, as soon as you walk in through those doors, it is a rainbow fest. So. The well-being areas all promote um, that these are safe spaces for the LGBT community. Now, as somebody who works with disabilities, I find it very difficult working in schools which are promoting this inclusive education, but I'm not seeing any of it inclusive to the children that I'm working with. I went to a assembly for Inclusive, uh, inclusivity and Diversity Week. So we had an assembly and it was an LGBT assembly. The children I was working with at the time are deaf. So I have to use sign language to then, you know, converse the, the, the lesson. 
Uh, one particular pupil I had with me was from Africa. He did not understand, the sp well, he couldn't hear it, but he also didn't understand the English language. He didn't understand British Sign Language either. As they are talking through this video, they start presenting pictures, two of them are two males in, a, in, a, in an embrace. This boy was shocked. He didn't know what he was looking at, why he was looking at it, because this was something that from where he was from and the environment he's in, it is not something that he's come across. So next up came a video on LGBT. This video starts to play, so I stop and I raise my hand and I said, for this inclusive assembly, is there any chance there's subtitles for the deaf pupils that are here today? Absolutely not. No subtitles in this inclusive assembly. Something else that we know that is being taught in these lessons is pornography. I'm sat in a class, I've got two eight-year-old boys, and as I'm listening out my side ear, I can hear them talking about Pornhub. So I bring this to the teacher. As an agency staff member, I don't have quite the same scope in school, so I speak to the teacher about these, this conversation that I've just heard these two boys having. The teacher thought it was hilarious. So once I got home then, I rang Kim, I told her, I said, I'm really quite distressed over this conversation I'm hearing and how serious the school are going to take it. So I've got two things going on in my head here. These children have come across it accidentally, potentially got an older sibling that's watching it and have come across it through them, or they're being shown it, they're being exposed it by an adult, and this needs to be investigated. It needs to be investigated whatever the reason is that this child is looking at it. So I emailed the school, but from there, unfortunately, they're my uh, my knowledge goes no more. I'm not allowed to be involved. I've had to report to a local school that I had become aware that there was a six-year-old pupil, a six-year-old girl, who was watching pornography on a regular basis. Back a few weeks ago, I got to sit in on an RSE lesson, and this was for a profound learning disability group. So these were your eight and nine pupils. They are not in mainstream school. And we had to have a lesson on STDs. So some of you might think, oh, okay, doesn't sound too bad. Until the, t t the pupils are then presented with the pictures of various STDs. The children are then informed how these STDs are passed and all the various different engagements. I'm being very conscious there is children around, so I'm trying to be careful how I pick my words here. So they were then told what they would have to do with each other, you know, to be able to catch these diseases in the first place. I stood sat next to these pupils where they sat with their hands behind their hands, their heads behind their hands stating out loud that they didn't want to learn this, where they were told they were being silly, to stop reacting silly. I'm sat there thinking, why are we teaching these children? Because none of these children should be engaging in any of this. They can't consent. And even if they have given consent, they don't know what they're consenting to is actually not good. These people didn't know this until this moment of being taught. You have now put ideas into the head of activities they can engage into. If any of these children were to be engaging in any of these activities, it needs serious investigation. Because they are either engaging with it with another pupil or they're going to be engaging with it with an adult. Either way, both cannot happen. But yet we were talking about it as if it was perfectly normal in class. No part of this lesson did it say, you're under 16, this is illegal. No part of this lesson said, you shouldn't be doing this with XYZ person. 
There is one general consensus here. As Kim was saying earlier, this is comprehensive sexuality education. A huge part of this is coming from Planned Parenthood. You look at the very people promoting this education are the very people benefiting from this education. Planned Parenthood. Over here we have the International Planned Parenthood Federation. They're running all our family planning clinics. Who makes all the money from the abortions of these young children? Who is making the money from the contraceptions these young children are taking? Who is making the money from the morning after pill these children have to take? Who is making the money from the puberty blockers these children are going to take? The gender reassignment that these children are going to take? The same big organizations that promote all of this education are the same organizations that are raking in the cash from this education. In school, I can't speak for Ireland, but I can speak for Wales. We have got a major crisis. Children are leaving still unable to read and unable to do basic math. I sit in the PRU unit, pupil referral unit. This is for the children that just can't stay in mainstream classes anymore. Their behavior is too bad, so they go off to the pupil refu referral unit. I have to do a literacy test with them. We're sitting there doing a mice of men. Many people know this book, fantastic book. But I'm sat with this child who can't even read the question. Never mind he understands the question and he certainly hasn't got a clue what the book is talking about. We've got kids who have got autism, ADHD, emotional problems, problems at home because they're coming from families where there's abuse. Now whether that abuse is happening to them or the parents themselves are abused. There's alcohol, drugs, and schools are failing these children. Can't sit still in class. Off to the pupil referral unit you go. Struggling with your learning. Off to the pupil referral you go. But don't worry, we've got 400 million to plow into sex education. This is not acceptable. We are failing our kids on every single level. This is a, school is a factory. Children go in. I don't know again in Ireland, but for schools over with us, it's all about your citizenship. It's all about your citizenship and becoming a good mem, good citizen in society. Our schools are promotion. Are you a good citizen? How can you be a better citizen in your society? And that's all we've got. We've got employees coming out of the school all the same way, indoctrinated, propaganda. This is not good enough. We are failing at every single level. For those of you who have got children in school, you are only at the start here of this fight over here. You are going to be met with opposition. The teachers are going to tell you they don't know what you're talking about. Even when you show them what you are talking about, they'll say, oh, no, 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 not in this school. Maybe the school next door, but we won't teach that in this school. It is going to be some time. And until parents are getting those lesson plans in front of their own children and their own children are coming home saying, yes, we did learn this and that, the struggle is going to feel real to start. You're going to feel alone. You're going to feel like no one's listening. You're going to feel like you're being told you're crazy. But you just have to keep standing tall and take each other with you. You know it. You don't know it so well. Then come with me, please. I need to talk to my teacher. I need to talk to my school. Show them what's in America. Don't let them tell you that this is not American. 
Your education comes from UNESCO. It comes from the United Nations. It comes from the World Health Organization. This is American. Show them the English lesson contents. Oh, but this is not England. But this is, this is the whole of the UK, the whole of Europe. We have all got comprehensive sexuality education that is coming from America. Don't let them tell you your education is devolved from the UK, devolved from the rest of the world. It is not. And that is all you know you've got to stand solidly behind. This is a global agenda and it is all over the world and it is not going anywhere unless we stand united and say not on our watch. Thank you again for allowing me to speak today and again I've been honoured coming over here. I have been searching for all the information about Northern Ireland since we found this out in 2020. Um, you're a bit slow to the party, <laughs> but fortunately you've got us paving the way ready to show you how to do it. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you, Adele. Next up we have uh, Reverend Paul Dowling here. He's going to bring uh, us a message. Thank you, Paul.